Hey, it's a Green Mountain Maniac. What we got here is a mess. Uh, this is the collapsible 20 meter delta loop for a portable operation. I actually ran this here at the house for about a year. And it don't look like much, but I'll tell you what, man, this thing works awesome. Probably my favorite antenna of all the antennas I've ever made. This thing is gangbusters. It actually outperforms a hex beam 1,500 miles and under. Uh, you cannot put a lot of power into it because I use very thin gauge wire. I don't know, it's like 20 gauge or something like that. Um, but uh, works great. Use a Shakespeare Wonder Poles, two Shakespeare Wonder Poles right here. So what I did was I reconfigured it for portable use. So what you want to do is just make yourself a hub, connect it to a push-up pole. I made those push-up poles out of galvanized tubing. Use them a lot. And uh, this is one and a quarter inch PVC right here. Tubes. You want to buy a 10-foot length, cut it in half. Uh, that'll give you two five-foot lengths. Then you want to cut it again and mount the base of them to a hub. This goes on the truck for transport. You can't have these things sticking out. Uh, get yourself a set of one and a quarter inch couplers. These go in here. Wonder poles go in there. Uh, put a set screw in the top uh, just to keep the wonder pole from sliding all the way in. Have a set screw right there. Just drops in only about four inches. Sits in there. The wonder poles right here will come with a base on them. They will not fit in one and a quarter inch tubing. So I just cut them off. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, wire. There's a couple other things. Wire. Uh, I've got it. Don't I can't remember what frequency. Uh, 14,150 maybe. I have it cut for. Uh, there's roughly 71 feet. I think 70.9 feet of wire. This is the feed point. So what you want to do is once you get the wire cut, get yourself a piece of 75 mm coax. This is quad, what's called quad shield. You can get it right in Home Creepo or any store. Right, you don't need anything fantastic if you're just running barefoot. <laughs> Who cares? Um, I actually put about 400 watts into this and never had an issue. So uh, just create a feed point. This is an old plastic cutting board. The thing with 75 mm coax is you the shield you cannot solder to. So what you can do is bring a set of pigtails out, with put some quick disconnects on um, uh, where your element will connect. And on the shield side, I use a wire nut. You, you could use a crimp, um, fill it with some kind of dielectric grease, take the shield, wind it up, stick it into the crimp, um, and then take a length of wire for your pigtail for your connector and put that into the crimp, smash it down, crimp it. Uh, and that'll give you a connection for the shield. Never have a problem doing that. I just use a wire nut, <laughs> pack it with uh, dielectric grease, spin it up, tighten it down. And uh, what I do use, uh, if it's going to be out in the weather, you'll notice it's got all this black. It's all black. I use actually Plasti Dip. Um, and I spooge the Plasti Dip all over it. And it works really good. Water does not get in. Uh, to connect to your coax, I do this a lot. This is a real Rube Goldberg, but it works great. Bring your co get a piece of, uh, this is three quarter inch PVC tubing. I have a ton of it laying around. Get a couple end caps, drill a hole, bring your, PV your uh, 75 ohm in. And then I use a lot of bulkhead connectors. I love these SO239 bulkhead connectors. Uh, get your shield and your center pin. A little bit of a trick in there, but you can get it. I usually grind the cap down and then uh, uh, put the SO to slide it in, put the nut on the back, and uh, crank that sucker down uh, good and tight. And what I usually do is I put a little, little tiny bit of Gorilla Glue around the inside of uh, this cap. And once that sets, it ain't, it's not going to spin on you. Granted, you don't want to be connecting it with a pair of pliers. There's no reason. If you have to do that, you got a bent barrel or something. Or a bent brain. Anyways... Um, let me get this thing. I'll, I'll get it set up. And I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, a couple things I need to show you before I put it up. Uh, what I did was I put a hook. I screwed a hook in to the hub and the feed point. I just drilled a hole in it and you can just hang the feed point right there on the hook. Easy way to do that. You'll notice that the wire is helically wound 
on the 20 foot wonder poles. You're going to need to do that because the poles aren't quite long enough. That's why I have the five foot extensions on them. It doesn't make a bit of difference how the thing works, I swear. Uh, it'll work just fine. Uh, so the easiest way to do it is to um, grab a hold of the wire, lay, uh, throw the wire out on the ground in a straight line, and uh, basically hold onto the wire and the, and the pole, the wonder pole, and just turn it. Put on, oh, I don't know, 20 turns, 20 helical turns, wind it right down, wind the wire right down the pole. Drop it in the tubes, jack it in, you're done. Okay, we'll get it up here. Okay, there she blows. I don't know if you can see it too good. It's kind of up against the trees. But that's it, baby. I can tell you there is no contest between a full wave loop and a dipole. Don't believe all the crap you read online or wherever. Don't believe what they tell you. They're two to four S units quieter and they just work. Um, so that's it. Great uh, field day antenna. Uh, takes a little bit, you know, probably take you 10, 10 to 15 minutes to set up at the most, but not a big deal, really. Uh, for a very effective antenna, full wave loop, freestanding. You can even drop this on a pole on the back of a vehicle or something. Okay, there's one thing I forgot to mention, the coax. The 75 ohm coax, what you want to do is you want to uh, get your wavelength on the point of resonance, your resonant frequency, um, for your 75 ohm matching section, this is a this is a mono band 20 meter loop. Okay, if you want to multi band it, get yourself some ladder line. Figure out how much ladder line you need, and then run a four to one at the end, and that'll give you good lord, probably 20. Might even give you 20 through six meters. Um, so that's one way to do it. I, I like the mono band loop. I put it up against a multi bander, and on 20 meters the mono band wins um, because it's matched for it. It's just most efficient there. 75 ohm coax. Uh, get your wavelength figured out wherever you have the element cut for. Uh, the length of that, multiply that times 0.66. Uh, or I'm sorry, uh, get a quarter wavelength. So a quarter wavelength of uh, 14,150 or wherever you're going to cut it for. Uh, divide that by four. And then take that quarter wavelength, that one quarter, multiply that point times 0.66, and that'll give you the matching section length for the 75 ohm coax. Just cut it, hook it up, and go. There's no real science. It's not rocket science, man. Anyways, that's it, man. Enjoy. Good luck in your builds. It's a maniac. The